Right, let's talk about community. The ability to actually have a community of supportive people, because this is one of the keys that you need in order to get results in pretty much anything. So we'll spend a few minutes talking about this, and I'm going to give you five or six little actionable tips around how to actually build a better community for yourself. Now, as always, my name is Celeste. Hopefully you know this by now, and I am a no BS mind trainer. I create programs, courses, training for women who protect and serve so that I can help empower them to find freedom from chaos, clarity of purpose, and the power to create a life that they really love. So, community. I've always considered myself to be a little bit of an introvert, someone who's quite happy on their own, um, someone who almost struggles to connect with people. And it wasn't until I realised that actually it's not that I like to be alone. It's not that I can't connect with people. It's just that I was not connecting with the right people. I wasn't finding the right type of people who have similar interests, who have similar energy, who have you know similar values as me. There's something that we can talk about called a values clash. I've just done a long video on um, values and the importance of them. If you are surrounded in a community of people who have differing values to yourself, you end up with what we call a values clash. And that is one of the fastest ways to actually destroy a community. It's why people get sick of their jobs. It's why they fall out with people all the time because they're just butting heads because they are not aligned with each other and their values. Of course, there are other reasons, but that's a that's a huge factor. So when it comes to actually building a community, you'll find that there are a series of things that we need to to do. There are a series of conditions that we that we're required to meet in order to actually have a community that works and allows for everyone to grow and so that no one feels left out, so that there's no clashes and so that things don't fall apart. So the first thing is to make sure you know what your needs are. What kind of support do you need from your community? Because everyone has different levels of support. I personally don't need a huge amount of support. I'm very autonomous. Whereas I know people who need a massive amount of support and that's okay. But you need to make sure you're in the community that's going to give you the level of support that you need. Is it emotional is it professional? Is it personal support? Is it spiritual support? Whatever that is. If you go into a community seeking spiritual support and they are completely the opposite of that, they're all about professional development and business, then you're probably in the wrong community. So understanding your own personal needs for support is the first step in actually finding and building a community that's going to help you. The second thing, like I've already mentioned, is seeking out people who have the same kind of values as you. So being able to connect with people who like what you like, value what you like. And, and even if they don't, they at least have a level of respect or the ability to be open and understanding about it and, and open to different viewpoints rather than being very close minded and seeing things like it has to be like this. So, for example, within Project Tempest, you have to be a millennial woman in there. You have to be someone who has some kind of protection and service role because you're going to get each other. You're just going to get it. And when you find yourself surrounded by people who just get it, it makes such a massive difference. You don't feel the need to justify. You don't feel the need to try and explain all the time. You don't feel judged. And of course, we need to build relationships. We need to be able to actually nurture connections by showing interest in their lives. And you can't show an interest in someone's life if you have no nothing, no values, nothing in common. Otherwise, it comes off as false. It's fake. We need to actually be able to show an interest because we are interested. And that's only going to happen with people who are similar to you. There's no point me going into a community for people who are interested in trains, for example. No disrespect for people who are train spotters and like trains. I have no interest in that at all. So I'm not even going to be able to fake an interest in that. And that's not right for the community anyway, because it's disingenuine. So having proper, genuine interests so that we can nurture our connections with each other and being able to, to do that consistently. Having a space where you can feel safe and open enough to speak, you know, have conversations about when things are not working, have conversations about your success without fear of feeling like a show off or whatever. 
and everything else that sits in between, being able to just talk freely and openly and vulnerably and honestly with people who get it and who are going to support you rather than judge you. Being able to set boundaries and understand expectations. So in my community, you know, if you're, for example, if you come into my programs and you join in the one-to-one service and you, you get more personalized access for me, I have a um, a boundary at times you're able to contact me. So actually being able to set those boundaries and, and understand the expectations within your network so that there's no clashes, because that's going to be a lot more beneficial to everybody, a lot more respect towards each other. And then, of course, being able to celebrate being able to share your success stories, congratulate each other and be a source of inspiration rather than something that maybe makes people create a comparison and and makes them feel down on themselves. If you can find a community that gives you those six pieces, then you are winning. So, 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 so important because you're going to get a huge amount of, um, you know, progress out of actually being part of a useful community. And there's a lot of them that exist, but not all of them have all of those things that are going to help you move forward. So being able to look at those six key points and figure out, does a community have this? Yes, great. I'm in. I'm involved. If it doesn't, no, it's not really going to benefit me. So I'm going to keep looking for something else. So that's just a couple of keys for you to consider when you are building your community or seeking out your own community. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you listening to me ramble on about community and and uh, and building that. And like I said earlier, if you want access to seven days of free training, just drop me a line. I'll send you through my guide that will take you through seven days of seeking freedom from chaos, clarity of purpose and a power to create a life that you love. Super simple training available to any woman who protects and serves. You just let me know and I'll get that out to you. And uh, I'd also like to know what kind of communities you're part of. Just drop me a little line with um, with a community that you're in and something that hits all of those six points. Interested to see what you guys